So, I bricked my phone. But before that, hey guys, CP Moddy here back with another video, and yes, I did brick my phone, unfortunately. Now, at the time of filming this, uh, it's not bricked anymore, I did fix it. However, with that being said, I just wanted to go over the experiences and the things that I had to do to go ahead and de-brick my phone. Now, a couple days back, I made the video where we went ahead and jumped into the um, fast boot settings and got through the sort of broken dead Android thing and uh, sort of just bypassed all that nonsense in the menus. And I finally got it all working, and I guess I just wanted to share my experience experiences of being um, bricked out of my phone and what exactly happened there. So first and foremost, actually once the phone was unbricked and everything was loading up, reinstalling everything and just going back to where my phone was, was super simple. Now I use the Google Now Launcher and basically everything that I have is automatically backed up to the Google services and all those kind of things. If you haven't manually turned it off, then it's automatically doing this. So if you're unsure, it's probably doing this on your Android phone. However, with that being said, once Google Now Launcher was installed and I opened it up, all my apps applications, my wallpapers, everything that I had the phone set up to, so if I go ahead and unlock the phone right now, everything on the screens right here was basically where it was before I left, and I literally had to do nothing to get my phone back to where it was. All the software installed, all the settings set themselves up, even the Wi-Fi passwords reconnected themselves to the appropriate network. So I was pretty impressed by the ease of just how easy it was really to go ahead and set up your Android phone if you've already had it backed up. Now with that being said, I went from a backup from the day before, so I did lose that day's worth of data, but really it was a couple text messages and it wasn't anything too large. But back to the actual derouting process, it was one of the most simplest things to do. Now I've gone ahead and my modded Windows phones, I've gone ahead and jailbreaked iPhones, I've done a ton of things like that, but when it comes to actually bricking those devices, there's generally not exactly that much support, but it appears Asus has either set up a full dedicated website to modding and rooting your Zen phones, or someone else has, but there's a dedicated website to going ahead and modding and changing around your Asus Zen phones. So I basically jumped on there, I found a tutorial how to debrick your Zenfone 2 and boom it was simple to do that. Even new phones like the Zenfone Selfie, Zenfone Laser and all those other variants of the Zenfones basically had guides and tutorials for just about anything you want. So I'll leave a link down below to that particular website if you are an Asus Zenfone 2 or Zenfone owner in general. You might want to give that a bit of a look if you are into modding your phone. But the amount of tutorials and the ease of well use of the programs was really, really great. Compared to many other platforms such as iOS and even Windows phones, bricking your phone generally means you've completely and utterly lost it. I do know for a fact I bricked an iPhone 4S and it literally took me two weeks to unbrick the phone because I had to find some cracked version of iOS and then put that back in and that to sideload another thing and it was just an absolute nightmare. On top of that, Apple has also too gone and done some shady stuff where now you can't even really flash the stock firmware because one, they're not even giving out the stock firmware and two, they're just locking the phone down so much that not even the people at Apple can go ahead and fix this and generally you'll be buying a brand new phone. Kind of the same on the Windows phone side though, there's not exactly the largest mod library on the Windows phone side so we can't really compare it to our Android enjoyed phone. However, with that being said, there was definitely some negatives to going ahead and having a brick phone, other than the fact that your phone wasn't really working. Now, the main problem that I did have with the debricking process was the software that you actually go ahead and use. Now, I went ahead and used ADB, or Android Developer Bridge, I believe it's known as, and it was an absolute terrible experience. The software itself worked just fine, but actually working with the hardware was really, really bad. So behind me, I have my system that I was trying to use to flash the stock firmware, and unfortunately, some issue with Intel drivers and USB drivers caused some other problem with more drivers and basically just wasn't detecting the Zenfone 2. When you plugged it in, when it was in the um, developer ADB mode, uh, you heard the little Windows sound effect when you plug in a memory stick or something like that, but essentially nothing really happened. It took me three different devices to actually figure out that it, my desktop wasn't exactly picking up the drivers properly and I had to resort to my Surface to go ahead and flash the OS back onto. To it. In terms of the actual operating system or the firmware I had to flash, that was also to a nightmare to find. However, with that being said, Asus actually has a dedicated website to go ahead and finding firmwares and those types of things, but I wanted to go to a previous month's version of the firmware and I was like, so seeing that I'm trying to reflash firmware, you know, might as well go to a version that I actually liked, which was last month's. 
Uh, but no, the phone basically locked me out until I was trying to flash the latest version onto the actual phone. So I'm not exactly sure when an Asus Zenfone 2 is bricked, it's still technically working or something like that, but it just wouldn't let me go ahead and flash an older version of the firmware back onto the phone. Otherwise, ADB was actually pretty simple to use, typing Y for yes and for no, and essentially that's all you had to type, and just hitting some simple keys to go ahead and flash the firmware back onto your phone was pretty awesome in my experience. Once the phone had been flashed back to stock and I'd gone ahead and set it up, going through the lollipop reinstall windows and all those types of things, which was pretty simple as I mentioned at the start of the video, it was awesome to have all my apps synced back up, but for some reason when I went ahead and tried to purchase an application from the Play Store, it wanted me to go ahead and add another backup email address and sort of just wiped over my previous backup email address. So I'm not really sure whether that's a bug with Android in general or something like that, but when I bricked my phone and then fixed it, it wanted another recovery email address, so I'm not exactly sure what what went wrong there but um, yes it wanted another email address. In all, that's sort of my experience with it. It wasn't too positive, but at the same time, it wasn't too negative. There's plenty of guides and tutorials out there to help me out. However, with that being said, not all the software that I did have to use was able to be used with my hardware I have back here. Now, with that being said, I do have many other devices, so for me to go ahead and mod my Zenfone 2 wasn't that much of a problem, because if it did go ahead and brick itself, which it did, I could throw my SIM card in another phone and still have all my phone and texts come through on that other phone, and it did take me about four to five hours to go ahead and unbrick my Zen phone too. And in that time, I did get two phone calls and some text messages. So it was awesome that I had another phone to go ahead and back me up whilst I was fixing my main phone. So if you are in the modding scene, maybe go ahead and either buy a really cheapy phone or just have your old phone on hand or have some sort of other phone on hand in case you do go ahead and brick your daily driver or just the phone you were trying to mod. Otherwise, that is my experiences with bricked Asus phones and bricked phones in general. If you are an Asus Zen phone 2 owner, and do experience a bricking problem, you can go ahead and find some links down below to some guides, tutorials, and other helpful links to go ahead and unbrick your phone. Also, too, um, might as well check down below if you do own other phones. You may be finding some pretty interesting stuff down there. Otherwise, guys, my Zenfone 2 is up and running, and I should re-attempt that video so we can go ahead and bring our modded Zenfone 2 video out, which I spent quite a few hours on just to find out that the phone was bricked. So, otherwise, guys, like the video if you liked it, get subscribed. Also, too, let me know down below, have you experienced the same sort of issue with bricking your phone did you sort of find that there was a lot of help out there but not all the help was exactly helpful for your personal situation otherwise guys thanks for watching stay tuned and I'll see you all next time what?